Shalom, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our soon and coming King. Um, just spending a little bit of time in the Word, and the Lord pressed on my heart that what I just read, I should share, and He began to speak to you even more about more scriptures to put together to make a little sermon, a short one, that I should share with the body of Christ. So, um, this one's about not being deceived by witchcraft or false prophets or false teachers or wolves in sheep clothing for we are in the end times and the Lord says in the end times there will be many of these arising Amen so for example example Shandi Amandi the Jehovah in Handi you know you say that with a little bit of twist and a little bit lean to it and all of a sudden the guy is speaking in tongues but he just said Shandi and Mandi the Jehovah in Handi that ain't tongues but when you are bewitched, when you are deceived, when they have spirits working with them, they trick your ears and your mind and you think that you're hearing the gospel and really and truly, you're being bewitched. Amen. So the Lord wanted me to speak about this a little bit, to open brothers and sisters' eyes and their ears, to be careful. Amen. In these last days. So we're going to be reading from Acts chapter 8, verse 9 to 11. And the word of God says, and this is right after Stephen um, was stoned to death for his faith in Christ because he boldly stood up and basically what's that word summarized the whole gospel from Genesis to when he was alive Amen and many people came to Christ and many people were saved and yeah so they basically stoned him to death and um this was what was happening now because there was other preachers going around after him. Amen. So we're reading from verses 9 to 11. And the word of God says, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one. So this man called Simon was using sorcery and he bewitched means he put a spell on the people and they thought that he was some kind of a great one verse 10 to whom they all gave heed means they all listened to him and the least to the greatest saying this man is a great power of God oh Lord have mercy the least mean the poorest to the greatest meaning the richest they all gave heed, they listened to this man and they all said that this man is a great power of God. Notice that verse 9 says that he used sorcery to bewitch the people and now the people think that he's a great sorcerer of God. Lord have mercy. Verse 11. But to him they had regard because that a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Amen. So he bewitched the people for a long time with sorcery and witchcraft and they, saw, they thought he was a man of God. How many people out there in the churches right now, particularly leaders and pastors, prophets and apostles, using this witchcraft to bewitch the people with sorcery and they're like, oh, the great man of God, the great woman of God, when really and truly they are not of God. God did not raise them, God did not teach them, God did not send them, but they are working for the devil. Because see, the devil wants to use these 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 minions of him to, 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 to deceive our souls and drag us into the lake of fire with them because they know they're going for eternal torment amen they already received their price they already received fame they received fortune they don't care about going to hell because they never tricked them also to thinking that hell is one big party and because he was used mightily by them to deceive God's people to go to hell when they go to hell they're going to reign with the devil in hell and be some kind of a ruler down there now they're going to be burning in the lake of fire too if they don't repent before the Lord comes back or before they die. Amen. So we can see in this verse here that it's clearly telling us that this man used sorcery to bewitch the people, voodoo, witchcraft, for such a long time that the people perceived him to be a great man of God. Amen. And this is why the Bible says, study. Amen. Study to show yourself approved. Meaning, study the word of God and know what the Lord is saying. 
The Bible also says my people are lost because of lack of knowledge. Knowledge of not studying the word. Amen. Now, the Bible also says to try the spirits. That means not everyone that comes and says Jesus, Jesus, Jesus means means they're talking about our Jesus. Say Lord, 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 God, God, God. They might not be talking about our God. Because these witchcraft people, these Satanists, these Illuminati people, they all call their God God. But when they say God, they ain't talking about our God. They call Satan God. I don't mean they're talking about our God. And that's why the Lord says, try the spirits and see what they are of. Amen. For the devil imitates all that God does. He has no originality. There's only one creator. Amen. So, God made the dragonfly. The devil imitated it and made helicopter. God created the snake. The devil imitated it and made the train. God made the turtle. The devil imitated it and made the army tanker. God made miracle. The devil imitated it and made magic, sorcery. Amen. God made tongues. The devil imitated it and he made Latin. Sounds so much like tongues, whatever that local devil language is that they got one language that's just not of God. Amen. God made prophets. The devil made false prophets. God made sheep. The devil made wolves in sheep clothing. Amen. There is nothing new under the sun. The Bible says the devil keeps on imitating what God does. So much so now that he's imitating the preachers and the teachers and the apostles of God to deceive the people of God. Amen. See, so I said, Brother Francois, no, this is not possible. We know God different from, from when the devil. Yes. Congratulations if you do. But there's some people out there that don't see the fine line between miracle and magic. Between prophesying and prophesying. Between apostles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and minions sent by the devil to deceive the elect. Amen. I'm going to read this verse again. You can hear me, hear the word of God clearly. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they were all gave heed. From the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. Amen. Brothers and sisters, be careful. Be careful. They're using voodoo and witchcraft, pretending to be God's servants, when really or truly they're sent by the devil, or they're using the devil's power to imitate God's power. Amen. That's why the Bible talks about familiar spirits. Amen. Because God is all seeing, all knowing, omnipotent, omnipresent. He's everywhere. He knows everything. He sees everything. The devil can't do that. So apart from having cameras everywhere, he got demons walking around reporting what's going on in people's lives, reporting it back. So you're in a service and somebody comes and says, Oh, and you have a blue figurine on a yellow Chester's jaw on top of a white carpet in your house. Don't start praising God and saying, oh, this man is truly of God, because how would he have known? The demon looked through the window, he saw it, and he went and told him, because he's working with familiar spirits. Amen? And if you read, the Bible tells you about familiar spirits. So I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, be careful. Hear what the Lord is saying right now to the body of Christ. Amen? Now, the devil imitates all that God does. Amen? If we go to Moses, his days... When God was sending him to tell Pharaoh to let the people go, and Moses was showing signs and wonders from God, the devil through Pharaoh imitated the same signs and wonders. Amen. Watch this now. Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7. And we're going to read from verse 8 to 11. Amen. Look how the devil imitates the power of God to deceive people. Genesis chapter, no, sorry, Exodus, forgive me, brothers and sisters. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 to 11. And the word of God says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show us a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take the rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. 
So God's telling Moses, when God, my Pharaoh's telling you, Yo, what God are you talking about? Show us a sign of your God's power. God told him to tell Aaron to take the rod, the same rod that Moses used to lift up before this Red Sea and it parted, throw it down before them and it shall turn into a snake. And so Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. So the rod turned into a snake. But what happened? Then Pharaoh, verse 11, also called wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. And they also did in like manner with their enchantments. And they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. The devil just imitated a miracle of God. Moses told Aaron to throw down the rod, just like God had commanded him to, and the rod turned into a snake. What did Pharaoh do? He called his sorcerers and his magicians, and they too throw down their little rods, and it too turned into snakes. But because God's power is bigger than the devil's, it says, And they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Notice that their rods are the S, so there was more than one. So Aaron's one rod ate up their multiple rods because God's power is bigger than the devil. But that's a different ceremony. This is about how the devil imitated God's miracle in front of people. That miracle was the one rod turned into a snake, and Pharaoh with his sorceries and his magicians... The same thing that in Acts chapter 9, Simon was using to, 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 to bewitch the people through sorcery and magician and, and magic. is the same thing that Pharaoh used back then to deceive the people. Amen. And he used sorcery and bewitched the people. And just like how God's power is bigger than the devil's power in Exodus chapter 7 verse 8 to 11 because God's snake ate up the Pharaoh's magician and sorceries and witchcraft snake is the very same way that when um this guy's name Philip was preaching at this time that same Simon who was a witch of witchcraft he gave his life to Jesus and he started following Philip and all those that was preaching concerning the gospel. Because if you read verse 12 of chapter 8 of Acts, it says, But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, men and women. Verse 13, Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So he knew that this power of Jesus that Philip preached was bigger than his witchcraft. So he gave his life to Jesus. He got baptized. But before he did that, he was deceiving the people with his sorcery and his witchcraft. And they he was a man of God. Up until Philip came with the real gospel. And these people got saved and baptized. And they followed Philip and his teachings of what Jesus Christ really was about. And what God's power really was about. And in the same way here, you can see that God's power is bigger than Pharaoh's power and the devil's power. Because God's snake ate up Pharaoh's witchcraft and magician's snake. But the point that I'm making is that Pharaoh imitated the exact same miracle that was done through, 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 through Moses and Aram. Do not be deceived, be deceived, brothers and sisters. The devil's out here imitating God's miracle, imitating prophecy. Amen. Saying, Thus saith the Lord, and the Lord didn't say anything to them. Amen. Prophelying on all these stuff. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have to have discernment. We have to try the spirits. Amen. Now, if you go to Matthew chapter 24, even Jesus, he spoke about these things. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And the disciples asked him, in verse 3, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. Why? Because they will be trying to deceive us. 
telling us God said this and God said that when God never said nothing like that. This is your guide to what God is saying, the Word, which is Jesus. The Word became flesh. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, do not be deceived because Jesus himself said, Take heed that no man deceive you. He even went on to in verse 11, chapter 24, verse 11, he says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many are being deceived right now. Oh, God said it's okay if you sin because Jesus already came. Deceiving many. In the church celebrating Christmas and all these pagan stuff. So, oh, God says it's fine. Deceiving many. Still preaching prosperity gospels when it's time to preach repentance and holiness because Jesus is coming. Deceiving many. Amen. So brothers and sisters, we need to meditate on this word and be careful. Amen. Because even Revelation chapter 2, verses 2, Jesus was speaking about when he was coming back. And he says, I know thy works and thy, and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. So I know you have tried them and they say they are apostles and they are not but thou art found liars. Many false prophets shall come in my name, false apostles also. Jesus said himself that I know you have tried them to say that they are apostles but they are found liars. Amen. Reasoning with these demons, so what's your name? Why, who sent you? Rare, 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 rare. It's just like a movie pantomime. You know, in the movie, you see the bad guy, he shoots the other bad guy, he falls on, he dies. When the movie's finished, they all shake hands, go home with their paycheck. This is what they do with these demons. Imitating the power of God, what's working with all these spirits. They lay their hands on you because you have a back problem, the demon's on your back. Then they take the demon out your back and pray for somebody else's elbow and put the same demon in somebody else's elbow. It's not delivering no, no one from no demon. It's transferring the demon from that person to that person. It's not the power of God. A lot of deceivers are out there. Amen? Witches and wizards and warlocks and, 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 and sorcerers and magicians trying to stand in the pulpit talking about they're using the power of God when they're using the power of the devil and dragons and demons. Imitating the Holy Spirit, imitating the fire of God. Amen. And even verse 9 it says again, And I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them that say they are the Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Jews, God's chosen people. And even Jesus is saying, I know they say they're Jews, but they're not. They are the synagogue of Satan, wolves in sheep clothing. Amen. We have to try the spirits, brothers and sisters. Not everyone that goes up there and says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is of Jesus. The devil's working hard in these last days to deceive God's people. Amen. In verse 20, verse 20 says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophet, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. He's saying they even put in a Jezebel spirit on the pulpit now, talking about she's a prophetess. Hold on. To seduce my servants. How is this? Because why? There's some women out there that are women of God. That are preaching the word of God. But you've got other women out there. It's up on this pulpit. With their bright lipstick. Their earrings and their tight up clothes. Showing up their cleavage. Their tight trousers. Showing up the shape of their bum. And the brothers and sisters are trying to listen to the message. But they're being seduced. By their nakedness. Looking like a woman that's going to the club. Trying to find a boyfriend. And you don't understand that this is not of God. These people are up there seducing the brothers in Christ. Causing them to lust. And, and, and yes, we should be strong in the name of Jesus. But when you're being bewitched. When there is spells being sent through eyes and mouth. and sub, 
You don't know that when these people raise their hand, it's not the power of God coming out. It's demons that they're sending. Amen. Look at Daniel. He was a he was a David, sorry. He was a great prophet. And he accidentally saw a woman having having a shower. And he got so seduced that he, he sent for her, laid with her, and tried to have her husband killed to cover up his wrongs. That was an accident. What happened when that woman is purposely trying to seduce him? Hmm? Brothers and sisters, understand what the Lord is saying in here. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. The woman Jezebel, who called herself a prophet, seducing the servants. Understand, brothers and sisters, this is not no joke. Amen. Matter of fact, let's go to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 25. We see how these people seduced the people of God. These, these, these women of the Jezebel spirits. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 25. And the word of God says, sorry, Proverbs 24, verses 25. Sorry, sorry, brothers and sisters. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. Proverbs 6, 24 and 25 says, To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattering of their tongue, of a strange woman lost not after her beauty in thine heart neither let her take thee with her eyelids they're up there in the most makeup and the eyelashes is doing this the tight up see-through clothing and the Lord is saying lost not after her beauty in thine heart Neither let her take thee with thine eyelids. Why is the Lord saying to lust not after her beauty? Because he knows the beauty brings seduction. Why you need to be on the pulpit looking like you're going to the club? There's no moderation. There's no humility. It's just, look at me. Look how pretty I look. Look at my outfit. It's so tight onto my clothes. S -s -s Sucked on. You can see every shape on the body. No, brothers and sisters. Be careful of these people. And then they stand up there now and they preach the gospel looking like this. And then you, the devil tells you, oh, but they're preaching God's word. And they got on fool's hair. And they got on fingernails. And they got on lipstick. And they got on eyelashes. And they got on hoop earrings. And they got their cleavage showing. And they got on leather tight trousers. So if God could use them dressed like that, I can wear all of these things and still go to heaven. They're deceiving you, brothers and sisters. Daughters of Zion, do not fall for their bewitchment. Amen. Matthew, Matthew 24. Go back to Matthew now. We're going to close on Matthew. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, please open up the eyes of your people. Give them discernment to see what these people are actually trying to do. These last days. Matthew 24, verses 24. For they shall arise false Christ and false prophets. And shall shew great sign and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they will deceive the very elect. Even God's chosen remnant could be deceived. Because of these false prophets and false teachers showing great signs and wonders. They raise their hand and everyone falls. Who said that was the Holy Spirit? Hmm? Because the people there need deliverance and the demon inside the people is being commanded by the demon inside of him which is a higher ranking demon to fall down. Do you know that the devil has prophets that he trains in the spiritual realm and he gives them like 200 demons under his command. He puts a magic stone in their hand or a see-through glove that you cannot see and that's what carried the power. Huh? How does the Antichrist give, give people in Revelation power to call down fire from heaven? It's the same thing they do it now. Oh, you're sweating, you're sweating. That's not the Holy Spirit. There's a dragon breathing fire on you. Not because he waves his hand, everyone falls down. It's not the power of God. It's false. It's fake. They're using sorcery and witchcraft. We read it in Acts chapter 8, verses 9 and to 11. We saw it in Exodus 7 to 11. Amen. Jesus warned of it in Matthew 24. He spoke of it in Revelation chapter 2. 
and chapter 9 and chapter and, and verse 9 and verse 20 and he's saying again in Matthew 24 24 confirmation confirmation 24 24 but brothers and sisters don't fall for these wolves in sheep clothing don't fall for these fake prophets these fake pastors these fake preachers they're not trying to prepare you for Jesus return they're trying to prepare you for the Antichrist that's coming. They're trying to deceive you to drag your soul to hell. Pray for discernment. Try the spirit like the word of God says to try the spirits. Don't just trust them because they say, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is the time to be awoke, fully awoke. Amen. So this is the word that the Lord has given me. And um, I just pray that the power of the Holy Spirit give you the strength and the anointing to see through their deception and their lies, to see these wolf in sheep clothing, to see these fake prophets prophesying, talking about their prophesying, these fake apostles that are liars, these people that have got a pantomime putting on a show with demons and it's got nothing to do with Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 8 verse 9 to 11 said that they told you that they used sorcery and witchcraft to bewitch the people and the people thought that he was a man of God. Then in Exodus chapter 7 verse 8 to 11 we saw Pharaoh and his witchcraft magicians and his sorcerers imitate the exact same miracle that, that Aaron done through the power of God. Jesus warned of these Jezebel spirits. Jesus warned of these fake apostles that are liars. He warned of these fake prophets and fake signs and wonders to deceive the elect. Be awake, brothers and sisters. Pray for discernment. Try the spirits. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit that you can discern who is of God and who is not. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the love of God be with you all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shalom.